Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Linda. We're the Broom Boss. We have three grown children and two amazing grandchildren. We love youth ministry, and we are so glad that we get to be involved here at our church. But we need to confess that we have a problem. For years, if someone was driving through Middlebury, we would ask them to help satisfy our addiction. Fortunately for us, people did not often travel to Middlebury. Then our favorite treat came to our town. You can't eat just one, and your appetite is never satisfied. Some of you may be familiar with the rise and roll deliciousness. We affectionately refer to it as Amish crack. God's Word also talks about an insatiable appetite. In Matthew 5, 6, we read, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus knew that human survival required that people have the key ingredients of food and water, and that no matter how many times they were filled, they would need bread and water again and again. Jesus used their need for physical survival to emphasize the depth of their need for righteousness. Yet, Jesus knew that they would seek to find righteousness in other places. Jesus was talking to people who understood the reality of being hungry and thirsty. Jesus' audience spent a significant amount of time filling water jars and seeking food. They experienced parched mouths and stomachs growling in hunger. Our physical life depends on food and water. Our spiritual life depends on running after righteousness. God designed people's appetites to hunger for God. People sometimes seek to satisfy this hunger in a variety of unhealthy ways. These substitutes for real righteousness are like trying to satisfy our desire for rise and roll donuts with a Krispy Kreme substitute. The palate longs for the cinnamony sugar delight long after the, the less than satisfying Krispy Kreme sugar creation has been devoured. Jesus knew that people were hungry and offered himself as bread. He knew they were thirsty and he offered himself as refreshing, life-giving water. Yet we read in Jeremiah 2.13, They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and had dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot hold water. People seek happiness and fullness for their hunger without considering that happiness is a byproduct of hunger and thirsting after righteousness. Righteousness means to be right with God. God blesses those who hunger and thirst so that they will be filled and then desire more. Just like the cinnamon sugar sweetness that tantalizes your taste buds and makes you crave more, the taste of righteousness creates a craving for more. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34, 8. There is a holy dissatisfaction that hungers after more righteousness, once we have discovered the sweetness of God's righteousness. C.S. Lewis portrays our appetites run amok in the character of Edmund in the classic, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Edmund developed an insatiable appetite for Turkish delight. His decisions were driven by his desire to satisfy his need for Turkish delight. His desires led him to align himself with evil. Here's a quote from that story. At last, the Turkish delight was all finished, and Edmund was looking very hard at the empty box and wishing she would ask him whether he would like some more. The queen knew that anyone who had once tasted it would want more and more if they were allowed to go on eating it till they killed themselves. A death from being consumed by their own desires reflects people who seek to satisfy their God-given appetite for righteousness with cheap imitations. Jesus satisfies and fills when we hunger and thirst after righteousness. And yet, there's a blessed dissatisfaction that wants more and will only be satisfied fully when we see Jesus face to face. In this life, our hunger will never be fully satisfied, nor our thirst fully quenched. When we reach heaven, then it can be said of us, never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. Their shepherd will lead them to springs of living water. Revelation 7, 16 and 17. So what do we do with this holy discontent? Jesus put it this way in Matthew 6, 33. But seek first his kingdom 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We don't need to muster up our own strength and righteousness. Jesus has provided us with the menu and the appetite. Our hunger and thirst for righteousness is simple conformity to his will. We need to choose to allow Jesus to instill a measure of desperation in our hearts. Choose to hunger for righteousness and pursue it with the desperation of starvation and dehydration. The results lead to a holy dissatisfaction that brings the desire to continue to seek more of His righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be given to you as well.